Well, hello again. This is Dr. John from Gateway Counseling Center right here in Boynton Beach, Florida. I want to welcome you again to another edition of our Overcomer video blog. Hey, I have a question for you today. What do you think is the number one mental health issue in America? Did you figure it out? Okay, it's anxiety. Anxiety is the number one mental health problem in America. Close to it, depression. Really, the two go together. They kind of feed off of each other. Let me give you some statistics, which I know sometimes can be boring, but really kind of amazing when you, you know, think about it. Um, 42.5 million people in America suffer with anxiety. And perhaps you thought you were the only one. Well, not by a long shot. Hopefully that can help you feel a little bit better. That if you're dealing with anxiety, a whole lot of other people are dealing with it also. Uh, you're not crazy, you're not hopeless, you're one of a lot of people that deal with this subject. In the state of Florida, 32.3% of the population deals with anxiety. Here in Palm Beach County, the, the county that I live in, 40% of the population of this county deals with anxiety. Four out of every 10 people. Uh, the age group that uh, deals with anxiety the most is the 30 to 44 year old age group. 23% of this age group. Sometimes folks would think maybe it's um, older people, you know, with other issues. But, you know, this is a relatively young age group. And, um, you know, start out in life, starting to approach prime uh, earning years, raising families, a lot of things that can be triggering that anxiety. Now, if you study generations at all, it's interesting, the generation that is the highest level of anxiety is the Gen Z generation. That's people from 10 to 25. Uh, again, 32% of this generation deals with anxiety. And 32% of adolescents, you know, teenagers deal with anxiety. I don't know that I've ever seen a time in all my years of dealing counseling when I've seen more teenagers and young people, you know, middle school, elementary, that are dealing with um, anxiety. I think there's a lot of stressors on them. You know, they're really kind of overscheduled in a lot of ways. They have a lot of pressures about school and building their resume and trying to get into the right, you know, college and you know, all the advanced courses and dual enrollment and all these kind of things, parental expectations. Uh, young people, tremendous amount of anxiety they deal with. And then of course, don't forget, there's always the boy-girl relationships, which are always big at that time. Uh, and more females deal with anxiety than males. Now recently, I just wrote a blog on anxiety. It's uh, on our blog site, it's a written blog. And I have got these stats on there and more details about anxiety. I think you'd find that helpful as you look at it. But uh, when you think about anxiety, what is it? Really anxiety, when, when you get anxious, because a lot of people, they don't know how to tell uh, when they're anxious. So they're not sure what anxiety feels like. But anxiety is just the overstimulation of your nervous system. Uh, your nervous system is being thrown into fight or flight mode. You know, that's why God designed our brain. There's a little piece of your brain in there called the amygdala. And it's always searching for, you know, danger. And our, our prime directive is to stay alive in life. So as this finds any type of danger, then it prepares my body to do one of three things. Fight, flee, or I call it freeze, which is kind of like an animal playing dead. So I'm going to get ready to fight and destroy this threat before it can destroy me or flee. I'm going to try to run away and escape it or freeze. And uh, what that does when it comes to relationships, uh, of course, in a relationship, a lot of people, when they have the anxious response, they'll fight, maybe physically, which is not a great thing, or verbally. And, um, you know, there's no rules. If you're trying to stay alive and you're life is on the line. There's, there's no rules. You know, if you're struggling for your survival, you're going to grab anything, do anything, whatever it takes to destroy that opponent and keep yourself alive. And so that's why some people can get 
in their fights, they can get pretty nasty and say some uh, pretty mean, terrible things, you know, that are going on. And um, so you've got that component, you've got the flight component, you know, I'll leave the room or get in the car or drive away uh, or freeze. That's where somebody just throws up the wall, shuts down and um, just, you know, drives the other person nuts because they're not going to talk about it. Some people go to maybe one thing all the time, some rotate around, but none of those are helpful for communication because that fight or flight response, it's pumping out adrenaline, cortisol, it's shutting off your thinking brain because you're gonna be operating out of your emotional brain to just react to keep yourself alive. And that's not gonna be, it's not gonna work to try to carry on you know, a conversation. And so that's what kind of goes on when you get into the anxiety mode. And um, the problem with the anxiety is but pumping out all that adrenaline and cortisol, we're, we're not designed to sustain that in our life. That's for a short burst of energy uh, to get out of that dangerous situation. And then our uh, parasympathetic nervous system is supposed to trigger and tell my nervous system, okay, danger passed, everything shut off, calm back down again. But when it doesn't do that and I stay in that uh, extended anxious situation, all that adrenaline cortisol is gonna up my uh, inflammation in my body, which is a cause of most major diseases, especially diseases that are killer diseases, you know, cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, autoimmune diseases. And uh, then it's gonna lower my immune system. So now I'm gonna become more susceptible to, you know, other diseases. So it's definitely not gonna be good for me physically to stay in that you know, mode. Uh, so we wanna get that turned off and get out of that. Now, if you've ever wondered, okay, what does it feel like uh, to be anxious, to be in anxiety? Well, here's some symptoms. It's a feeling of nervousness. Uh, it's feeling helpless at times, feeling overwhelmed, a uh, sense of impending panic, danger or gloom, uh, increased heart rate, hyperventilation, sweating, trembling, uh, obsessive thinking about the uh, panic trigger. And you can get kicked into a mode of what I call people get anxious over their anxiety. And that's a pretty negative mode. We want to keep you out of that mode. And then there are physical symptoms because there's definitely a body-mind connection. And I've seen clients with these symptoms from feeling like they're choking, tingling sensations in their arm, uh, sensations that mimic heart attacks, chest pains, pain in different parts of their body. And these are very real to them. And they'll go to the doctor or the hospital and get all checked out and they don't find anything. And that's usually an indication that, okay, it's not physical organic. This is something uh, emotional you know, psychological. And, um, and that's because our mind and body are, you know, really together interconnected and one affects, you know, the other one. And so the problem with anxiety is when it starts to really interfere in your life. When it interferes in your life, it can be difficult uh, to control. And so many times anxiety, it's, it's totally out of proportion than the perceived danger. Sometimes there really isn't any danger. It's just that my mind is perceiving it, but it's an overreaction to what I perceive that to be. And so many times then people start avoiding places, other people, uh, different situations. And anxiety is something you have to push back against because if you don't, it'll keep creeping like um, cancer that metastasizes and will be taking over areas of your life. And there was something that you didn't used to be anxious about, now you start getting anxious. And it'll shrink your life. It'll just, you know, take it over and you'll end up a prisoner in your own home. You won't even want to leave your house or leave your bedroom. And other people, other friends or family members can get very frustrated with you or maybe somewhat 
judgmental or simply not understand and say like, I don't, I don't know, this is ridiculous. Why are you acting like that? Why don't you just snap out of it? Which if it was as easy to do that, you would have already done it. Uh, the truth is it's like anything in life. People can't understand unless they've actually, you know, been in it. Now, um, causes of anxiety, uh, there are a few key ones. One is genetics. Um, you know, there seems to be a genetic component to it. Another is personality type, particularly sensitive personalities are more, uh, seem to be more prone to worry and anxiety. Um, environment, and that can be linked to personality. And you know, when people grow up in a uh, dysfunctional, chaotic environment, a lot of moving or maybe, um, you know, fighting, things like that definitely can trigger anxiety in, in folks. Trauma is a, a root of anxiety. Anxiety is kind of the body's way to get you not to notice, you know, the trauma or address it. And of course, stress. Stress is a major cause of anxiety. Uh, as the stress goes up, the anxiety goes up. And as the anxiety goes up, then that leads me into panic, which is just really bad anxiety. And then um, you can have some organic um, causes of it, you know. Um, hormones, for example, affect my moods. And so your thyroid could be off. And that's going to affect your moods, can affect anxiety. So it's always good to go get those physical things checked out. Now, you can uh, go on and read the written blog and get a little more detail in each one of those causes of anxiety. You don't have to have all of them. You know, I mean, you can have just one of them, and, and that can be enough to trigger, you know, anxiety. But uh, take a look at that. Take a look at the several types. Uh, on the written blog, I mentioned a number of different types of anxiety, from just a generalized anxiety, people that are just always anxious about things in general to specific, you know, phobias. But particularly uh, as a result of the pandemic, we've seen a real spike in anxiety. And I think one uh, of the causes, really two main causes, one is isolation, because we're not made to isolate. You know, you wanna drive somebody nuts, put them in solitary confinement. So as people had to be isolated away from friends and co-workers and schoolmates that drove anxiety up and then of course people's businesses shutting down uh, losing jobs financial pressure that drove a lot of anxiety and with that increase in anxiety now the data is coming in we've seen an increase in suicides uh, people relapsing back into addictions alcohol you know drugs all these as ways to cope you know, with the anxiety. So in a lot of ways, the cure was worse than the disease. I think we're probably going to see that more people died from this supposed cure than what they actually died of, of COVID. Um, I also have in that written blog some various cures for anxiety. I think I've got about 13 things on there that will help you from anxiety. And they range from therapy tools to medications, to more natural things like vitamins and supplements. So you can go on and read through, and I think you'll find some help with uh, all these various things that you could use to combat the anxiety from different fronts. But I think the biggest thing about getting the anxiety under control is coming to a point where you kind of say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of living the anxious, lifestyle. I've reached what I call the motivational crisis that I just can't keep living like this. And so I am ready now to fight back. I'm ready to fight back against this bully of anxiety because what happens in a lot of cases, things that are causing the anxiety have gotten stuck in the unconscious mind and they have to get flushed down of there. They have to get released out of there. And there's different ways to, to do this. But um, there's a lot of different techniques that you can use, but the client has to be ready to do the work. You know, many times I'll see people come into my office and they'll have anxiety and we'll give them tools and they'll come back the next week and I say, well, did you try any of these? Did you do any of these? No, I really didn't. You know, you can't just show up to the therapist's office 
and sit in there for 15 minutes or an hour and then walk out and not do anything till next time you go back in and think you're really going to defeat your anxiety. It's work. It's a fight. You've got to be willing to do the work, uh, fight the fight, really engage and work on that if you want to see success. I think one of the biggest uh, things or hopes that I want to leave with you about this is don't suffer alone. Anxiety is not something you need to be ashamed of. Like I said, a lot of people have it. And a lot of Christians feel ashamed because they think, well, I'm a Christian, I shouldn't have anxiety. So that adds more anxiety to them. Well, if you read the Bible, there's a lot of Christians that were anxious. And there's a lot of good people that suffer with anxiety. So get some help. You know, uh, get a good therapist. Go in there. Do the work. And it's like any chronic health issue. You have to be willing to um, push back against it so it doesn't take over your life. And even if you don't make it totally go away, the idea is you can at least manage it where it doesn't interfere with your life. So I hope you go online, read the written blog, get a little more of the details on that. And if we can be a help to you in dealing with your anxiety, just give us a call here at Gateway Counseling Center or go online to gatewaycounseling.com and we'll be more than happy to meet with you and uh, walk with you through that uh, healing process of your anxiety. Okay, don't forget this. Remember, God designed you to be an overcomer and you can overcome. Well, God bless you. I'll look forward to seeing you in our next broadcast. Thank you. Bye now.